Hey guys, it's Miss Rainey. Today we are working on Chemical Foundations Part 4, where we will be looking at the mole and molar mass, mole conversions, molarity, and dilution. I hope you're ready. Let's get started. Alright, we are starting today with the mole, which is a fundamental unit for counting particles on the macroscopic level. It's defined as the number of carbon atoms in exactly 12.0 grams of carbon-12, also called Avogadro's number, named after Amadeo Avogadro, and it is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That is how many atoms there are in 12 grams of carbon-12. But what's cool about this number is that it's also the number of atoms in the periodic table mass of any element. So if you had a mole of neon atoms, that would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd neon atoms, which, if you look on the periodic table, is 20.18 grams. So 20.18 grams of neon atoms contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd neon atoms. We would also work for ions. So if we had a mole of chlorine ions, that would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd chlorine ions, which if you look on the periodic table is 35.45 grams of chlorine ions. This would also work if you had, say, molecules, like one mole of, let's say, water molecules. That would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. I'm just going to write MLC for molecules, which is, if you add it up on the periodic table, a hydrogen is 1.01 grams times 2, plus an oxygen is 16.00, which equals 18.02 grams for one mole of water molecules. So the molar mass is the mass of a mole of a sample of atoms or molecules or ions or whatever it is you're looking for in grams. The mass of a mole of whatever it is in grams. So if we wanted to find the molar mass of calcium nitrate, CaNO32, and then we want to find how many molecules that represents. So for the molar mass, I'm going to take the mass of each one of these elements. So calcium is 40.08, according to the periodic table. Nitrogen is 14.01, and oxygen is 16.00. The trick is, though, there's not just one calcium and just one nitrogen and just one oxygen. There is a parenthesis here, which is telling me that there are two sets of everything inside that parenthesis which means that there are two nitrogens. And two sets of everything inside that parenthesis means there's two times three oxygens, which is six oxygens. So now if I add all those together, I have 40.08 for my one calcium. I have 28.02 for my two nitrogens. And I have 96.00 for my six oxygens. Add those all together, and I get exactly 164.1 grams of calcium nitrate per mole. That's the molar mass of calcium nitrate. So then, how many molecules of calcium nitrate does this represent? That is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Because the molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance, and one mole always has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, or atoms, or ions, or whatever it is that you're looking at. All right, how many moles of NO2 molecules are contained in 56 grams of NO2? So first thing I want to find out is the molar mass of NO2, and I realize that that should have a subscript there. So that's one nitrogen. 14.01, and two oxygens, 16.00. So when I add that together, that's 32 plus 14 is 46.01 grams per mole. So now we're just going to use a little bit of dimensional analysis to convert. If we have 
56.0 grams of NO2. Sorry for my handwriting, guys. And I want to change the grams to moles. I'm going to use that molar mass as a conversion. One mole is 46.01 grams. And then I'll di take 56 divided by the 46, and I get 1.22 moles of NO2. All right, what about, what is the mass of 2.5 times 10 to the 24 molecules of water? So let's see, 2.5 times 10 to the 24 molecules. Again, I'm abbreviating that MLC, because it's a long word. There are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in every one mole of a uh, substance. And then for water, if you remember a bit ago, we said that water was 18.02 grams per mole. So one mole of water has a molar mass of 18.02 grams. So when I multiply, that's 2.5 times 10 to the 24 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23 times 18.02, and I get 74.81 grams. Now if we look at our significant figures, there are two significant figures in this number. So I want only two significant figures, so it really should round to 75 grams. Okay, so for the next one, I want you to pause your video now and try this one on your own before you come back and watch me work it. Okay, I hope you tried that one on your own in that little break. Bees release about one microgram, which if you remember from our conversions is about one times 10 to the negative six grams of isopentyl acetate, C7H1402, when they sting. The resulting scent attracts other bees to join the attack, which I don't know about you, but I think is horrifying. Okay, so what we wanna do is find the number of molecules of isopentyl acetate released in a typical bee sting. So if it's 1.0 micrograms or one times 10 to the negative six grams, we've got to figure out how many grams there are in a mole. So C7 is seven times the mass of carbon and carbon is 12.01. H14 is 14 times the mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01. O2 is two times the mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. So if we add that all together, 84.07 plus 14.14 and 32 is 130.21 grams per mole. So if it's 1 times 10 to the negative 6 grams in a bee sting and 130.21 grams in a mole, we can figure out how many moles of molecules there are. We're not looking for moles of molecules, we're looking for actual molecules. So one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And so if I multiply that together, I get 4.6 times 10 to the 15 molecules of isopentyl acetate per B sting. And that was just rounded to two significant figures. So then how many carbon atoms, just the carbon atoms, are present in this amount? So if I had 4.6 times 10 to the 15 molecules, and every one molecule of C7H14O2 has seven atoms of carbon in it, I'm gonna take that 4.6 times 10 to the 15 and multiply it by seven. And I get 3.2 times 10 to the 16 atoms of carbon in every single bee sting. Ooh, that sounds scary. All right, now we're going to talk about molarity. Molarity is a unit of concentration for solutions and is defined as the number of moles of a solute dissolved in one liter of a solution the total solution, not just the sol solute, sorry, not just the solvent. So that is molarity is equal to the moles of a solute per total liters of solution. So that means if I had a 3M NaOH solution, and notice that my M is always capitalized, 
That means I have three moles of NaOH and one total liter of solution. Not one liter of water, one liter total of solution. So let's look at how we can work that in an actual chemistry lab. If we know that molarity is moles solute per total volume of solution, what is the molarity of a solution made by dissolving 73 grams of HCl in enough water to make 500 milliliters of solution? But my formula has liters and not milliliters, and my formula has moles and not grams. So I'm actually going to have to do two separate conversions here. One with the 73 grams of HCl to turn it into moles. Okay, so H is 1.01, Cl is 35.45, which gives me 36.46 grams per mole for the molar mass of HCl. That is 36.46 grams per one mole. And when I multiply or divide 73 divided by 36.46, I get 2.00 moles of HCl. But I also want to have liters and not milliliters, 500 milliliters. There are 1,000 milliliters per every one liter. That's 0 0.5000, look at my significant figures here, liters. So then when we want molarity, molarity is just take your moles divided by your liters. So essentially 2 divided by 0 0.5 gives me 4 with three significant figures, 4.00 m. That is my molarity of that HCl solution. But what's really important with molarity is actually preparing a solution. How would you prepare 700 milliliters of a 0 0.025 molar solution of calcium chloride? So we want to know how much calcium chloride we're going to need to mix with how much solution to make this solution. So using our molarity formula, molarity is moles over liters. That 700 milliliters is going to convert to liters. 700 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.70 liters. And we've got my molarity. So if I've got molarity of, let's see, 0 0.025, no, try to make my colors make sense here, 0 0.025 molar, and then I've got 0 0.70 liters, and changing my colors here all over the place, trying to find my moles, I'll take my molarity times my liters to get my moles, and that will give me 0. 0.0175 moles. So I'm going to need 0 0.0175 moles of calcium chloride to make this solution. But I don't actually want to know, like, if I have a balance, how do I know what's 0 0.0175 moles? The balance will only measure in grams, not moles. So now I'm going to figure out the molar mass of calcium chloride so I can figure out the number of grams. So calcium is 40.08, chlorine is 35.45 times 2 because there are two chlorines, so that's 110.98 grams per mole. So if I take my 0 point, and I'm going to write this down here, 0 0.0175 moles, and I multiply it by the molar mass, that is 110.98 grams per every one mole, I end up with 1.94 grams. Which feels like, ta-da, I've got an answer. But that is not how would you prepare. That's just how many grams of calcium chloride do I need. So let's put this lab procedure together. And you'll have to bear with my handwriting here, sorry. We are going to weigh out 1.94 grams of calcium chloride into a weigh boat using a balance. We will add that to 
If you have a 700 milliliter volumetric flask, then you could use that, but volumetric flasks tend to not come in a 700 milliliter size, so you might have to add it to a one liter beaker. Or, sorry, not a beaker. We would never ever measure things using a beaker. Beakers have bad measurements. A uh, one liter graduated cylinder is what I meant to say. And then, so we'll take our 1.94 grams of calcium chloride, add it to, if you have a 700 milliliter volumetric flask, or if you just have a one liter graduated cylinder, and then we're going to fill it to 700 milliliters with water or distilled water. We're not gonna take 700 milliliters of water and then add the calcium chloride to it because the volumes may or may not be additive, so it might end up going a little bit over 700 milliliters. So you're just going to fill it to 700 milliliters to have a total volume of 700 milliliters. And then you'd use a stir bar or you'd just swirl it or something to dissolve it. All right, here's our last one. And this one is dilution. To dilute a solution, add a solvent to a more concentrated solution to make a less concentrated dilute solution. So you'll have a stock solution that's more concentrated and you're going to make it less concentrated. Here's our formula. M1 is the molarity of the first one. V1 is the volume of the first one. So let's see, get this here. Molarity and volume. And M2 and V2 are the molarity and the volume of the second solution. So if you need 50 milliliters of a 2.0 molar solution of copper chloride, but you only have a 6.8 molar, molar copper chloride, how would you make your solution? So I'm gonna plug that into my M1V1 is M2V2 formula. M1 is two, sorry, that was my highlighter. Change that to a pen. M1 is two M times 50 milliliters as my V1, my M2 is 6.8 M times X milliliters, two times 50 divided by 6.8, my X is going to be equal to 14.7 milliliters. But again, it says, how would you make your solution? Not just how many milliliters do you need, but how would you make it? So how would you make it? We would add 14.7 milliliters of the 6.8 molar copper chloride solution to a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder or a volumetric flask if you have a 50 milliliter volumetric flask but that would be ridiculously small and then we will fill to 50 milliliters total with water or distilled water. And then we're gonna swirl it or use a stir bar to completely mix the two solutions together. Okay, there we are. There's molarity, molar mass, mole conversions, and dilution, everything you should need to know about the mole. See you guys next time.